Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're gonna to talk about posterior box elastics orientation. So I have a lot of videos on posterior box elastics. So what I want you to do, this is a specific one about orientation. I'm not gonna talk about size, picking the size, when to wear it, when to use it, anything like that, strength, diameter. Um, if you want to know all that, you probably should listen to all the rest of my PBE. PBE is posterior box elastic videos. You know why I call it PBE? P B E. Okay. Um, watch those first. And to access those, you need to go into our Straight Wire playlist. To get there, go to my YouTube channel. To get there, go to your YouTube channel. Put in Straight Smile Solutions at the top in the search bar. That takes you to my YouTube channel. Once you are there, uh, if you scroll down on the homepage, the the playlist for the straight wire playlist oh i used to have this stuff memorized hang on let me look i'm there right now uh braces braces fixed straight wire is the third playlist down if you scroll down hopefully i don't change it by the time you guys listen to that but at the moment that's where it is go down there there's almost 200 videos. If you flip around, you can watch all the ones on posterior box elastics or elastics in general, or you can search by keyword within my channel for elastics. Okay, so I'm assuming you've already watched the other videos. Now we're gonna build on that and talk specifically about orientation. And you can see I've got a bunch of numbers here, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, three, four, three, five, five, six, okay? So let's go over Palmer numbering system. That's how orthodontics talk about teeth. Canines are always threes. First bicuspids, first premolars are always fours. Second premolars are always five. First molars are always six. Okay, so for someone that has all their teeth, sometimes people are missing teeth, sometimes they're transposed, it gets a little confusing, but standard numbering system, okay? So just a friendly reminder, why do we use posterior box elastics? Okay, I said I wasn't gonna go back to the beginning, but I kinda got to. Um, we use them because, well, one of two different reasons. The primary reason I use them is during the leveling and aligning phase. Don't forget, there's three major phases to orthodontics. First one is leveling and aligning. Second one is space closure and bite correction. Third one is finishing and detailing. Sometimes you, you know, you'll have a year or a really long time in one phase and two months in the other phase and another patient, it's gonna be flip-flopped. It depends on what the patient needs. You cannot, I repeat, you cannot skip from one phase to the other and go back to the other phase. If you do things out of order and you don't stay on course in your lane in the right sequence, I can tell you your cases will turn into a mess. You have to be really firm in your steps and how you do things and you cannot be like, oh, I see a space, let me just close that. If you haven't finished leveling and aligning 100% and you try to go into bite correction or space closure, weird things are gonna happen, okay? So this is during leveling and aligning, which is stage one. That means we're in light night high wires. We are straightening the teeth like all different types of straightening, like leveling is up and down, vertical things, right? Aligning is straightening, right? So while we're in light night high wires, we are straightening the teeth and we are fixing any vertical issues, level. So that could be open bite issues, be it anterior or posterior. It could be deep bite issues. Usually that's, well, it's a combination of anterior and posterior deep bite correction. So your relative ex, <laughs> absolute intrusion, relative extrusion. Okay. So in this situation where let's say we have anterior bite turbos on or an anterior bite plate and we are leveling the arches, we are encouraging the night eye wires to move faster during the leveling stages. You do not have to do this. You do not have to do this. This just speeds things up. It makes the leveling and aligning stage go faster. I don't usually give these on day one. Um, maybe a month or two in. I mean, it's just too much for the patient. They're very sore already from having the braces on. I kind of wait till they're over the initial soreness. And if you've never had braces, it is quite a shock. Invisalign is not at all that bad. Braces hurt. I mean, and and I can take you back going one or two generations. If you talk, if you if you are younger and you talk to someone that had like real braces, <laughs> those first few days, um, it's bad. Like it's one of those things where the kids are crying at school, they're having to eat soft foods for a few weeks. It's, you know, their whole lips, cheeks and gums are cut up. It is really torture. I mean, and it's one of those things that before aligners and other removable appliances, it was just a rite of passage. That's just something you have to do. You have to have braces. It's gonna suck. No one looks forward to it, right? You look forward to it if, if you're younger for like a day and then you get them and you hate them. 
and you hate them and you're like when can I get these off and it's like two years of awkward embarrassment and and just pain, you know, every time things get adjusted, every time you come in for a tightening, you're going to be sore for a few days, not as bad as the initial soreness. But anyways, it is brutal. I, I kind of think of it as torture. You know, we try to make it super fun, you know, as an orthodox, like, oh, yeah, you're getting braces. It's not fun. OK, so that's why I just love that Invisalign and other clear liners have gotten so much better over the years. And you can really do almost everything nowadays with removable appliances, which is not at all the torture that you had with braces. But anyways. Okay, so we're leveling and aligning, that's what they're for. So the, the video is specifically about orientation. So that, I can't answer that question. And so often I get doctors like, well, how should I wear it? Should I wear it, wear it upper three, upper four, upper three, upper four, upper five to lower three, four, five, or three, four, five, six to three, four, five, six, you know? Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're in the leveling and aligning stage, I tell them, okay, use some articulating paper, see what's hitting and see what's not hitting. Whatever's not hitting is where you're going to wear it. You can always wear it on other things. It's fine. I mean, you don't have to put hooks on everything because you can see here, as long as the terminal ones have hooks, it's fine, right? But if you specifically wanted to work on a, like if this was your major tooth, then I don't think I would hook it to this. I would hook it to that, right? I'd put a hook on this, like a Kobe hook and hook it to that because this isn't going to get quite as much push as this, 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 and this, right? So that's what I'm saying. You gotta look and see what you need and why you need it. You can see this one right here. I mean, obviously these aren't touching, right? So that's why we're hooking elastics to it, but this is touching, so maybe we're not hooking to this one. So that's the point, right? During the leveling and aligning phase, just to speed up the leveling and aligning, make it go quicker. Totally optional, don't have to do it. it just makes that go faster, and makes the braces go faster. If you don't wear it full time, it's not gonna work, so. Not a big deal. I mean, it's one of those things I'm going to give it to the patient during the leveling and aligning stage. I'm going to say, if you wear it, we will move through the stage quicker so that we can go into the space closure. Um, your braces will actually be on shorter. We can go into, you know, elastics to fix the bite. We can go into the next stage. So their choice. I'm not going to ride them that hard on it and be like, oh, okay, well, we're not there yet. So keep going. You know, if you want to wear these elastics, it's going to speed up. So yeah, that's it. All you gotta do is, is just check the bite with articulating paper. Now, that's stage, that's the first time I would wear posterior box laxus. There's a second time. And this photo reflects the second time. So the second time would be, we already did leveling and lining. We finished, we got to our 18 night tie. All the teeth were straight. We took a progress panel. We verified the bracket placement. We verified that the roots were all parallel. We did the whole finishing thing, not finishing, the whole Hollywooding step where we asked the patient and the parents to double check alignment. We double check alignment. Everyone's happy. You know, like I say, there's a lot of videos about this kind of repositioning visit. So, I mean, definitely watch all my videos on the repositioning visit because that's one that so many general dentists and pediatric dentists skip. And then at the end, they're not, it's not perfect because they forgot to do that step and now they got to go back and start all over again. It ends up taking way longer than it would have done if you just did things at the right time. So we moved through that, okay? We moved into our heavier wires, which you can see we've got on here. Maybe we did some class two correction or some class three correction. Maybe we did some space closure. Maybe uprighted on a second molar. I don't know. We're done now, okay? Everything is nice and straight. The bite is perfect. We're class one. Everything's straight. We're socked in. Well, we're not sucked in. So that's why at the very, very end, we might have another opportunity to wear some more box elastics. Now at the very end, this is a different story. We're gonna be using heavier elastics. Again, we're gonna be checking with articulating paper and then these are required if we wanna finish the case. And this is just one of the ways you can settle a bite in the back. Um, and the only reason you'd need to do this is if you weren't using bonded retainers. Now, if you're using bonded retainers, Hopefully you're not making them yourself. Hopefully you're sending out to a lab so that they're properly made. If we're using bonded retainers upper and lower first, then you could just let the bite settle in the back without elastics. You can take the braces off. You don't make the Essex yet. You just let the bite settle. You check them every week, every week or two until the bite is settled. You gotta check them very frequently. So they can't do this right before they go on vacation or right before they're very busy because you can overcorrect. okay? But then you let the bite settle and then you make the Essex to go over it. If you are only doing Essex and not bonded retainers, then you have to sock in the bite like this. You can't be making Essex unless you have contact on all the teeth in the back. That is below standard of care. You are basically making some teeth non-functional and that's not cool, okay? So you either got to do the bonded retainer route, let things settle, or you need to use these type of finishing elastics. And you can use triangles, you can use box elastics, you can use Z elastics. I have a lot of videos on all this stuff, so you can look them up by keyword and just check with articulating paper and have them sock it in with elastics at the very end, assuming everything else is done, okay? 
Now, if they're non-compliant with the elastics, you got to go back to the other idea. Should I use a positioner? Should I use the bonded retainer? Should I let things settle naturally? Because that takes the compliance out of the situation. So you can't always have a one-step fits all approach. But in terms of orientation now, this is where orientation matters more because you're using heavier elastics. In the whole posterior box elastics in the first part, in the leveling aligning stage, I'm using like light to medium. I mean, they're like two ounce elastics, 2.5, maybe at most three ounce elastics, 3.5. But in the end, if I'm doing it on stage three, which is finishing in detailing, I'm using heavy, heavy, six, 6.5 ounce elastics, you know? So the orientation does matter in this situation. So if the patient is class one, I want the elastics when I put them in the mouth to be vertical. If the patient still has a hint of class two, where I'm starting and why the patient is still, you know, we're finishing up the bite, I might have my elastics have a class two vector, okay? If the patient has class three, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna do a class three vector. So you can do that. Like if it's a class two or class three and we still need a sock in the bite, you know, if you want to, you can kill two birds with one stone. It's not, it doesn't make it quite as efficient than a straight direct class two elastic or a straight direct class three elastic because the vector of force isn't there. But if you just needed like a millimeter correction, it would be fine to kill two birds with one stone. Um, do a combination class two vector box elastic. So, all right. But yes, that's where the orientation is really most important would be, um, in the finishing and detailing stage, I don't love the idea that well, you could do a funky orientation with the light ones at the beginning because it's only two ounces, three ounces, and what really can go wrong. So, all right. Thanks so much. Hopefully that was helpful.